So yeah, full speed PS3 emulation on the new M2 Mac Mini is pretty impressive if you ask me. I mean, it's definitely a big upgrade from the M1 chip. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at some emulation on the brand new M2 Mac Mini. Now I've actually been really excited about this because if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know over here we love ARM CPUs and we also love mini PCs. This has kind of jammed both of them together and we've got an ARM based mini PC. Of course it's running Mac OS, but there are ways around this. We could use parallels to run Windows 11 on it. But in this video, we're going to be testing out some high-end emulation in Mac OS on the new M2 Mac Mini. And there's really no denying it. I mean, given that this is an ARM-based system, these do put out some really great performance. Even if you're not a big Apple fan, you got to give it to them because they have done a great job with these Apple Silicon chips. The overall design hasn't changed from the last M1 Mac Mini, and personally, I didn't pick one of those up because I was really waiting for the next generation, and here we have it. This one actually has the M2 Pro, and we'll take a look at the specs in a second. Round back, we've actually got quite a bit of I.O. given the form factor here. We've got two full-size USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports, a 3.5mm audio jack, full-size HDMI 2.1, four Thunderbolt 4 ports, and we've got four of them here because this is using the M2 Pro chip. The regular M2 only has two. It's USB 4, Thunderbolt 4, and it's using 40 gigabit protocol. We've also got Gigabit Ethernet and our power input. Apple is offering a few different models of the Mac Mini, and this one here has the M2 Pro 10-core CPU. We've got six performance cores up to 3.7 GHz and four efficiency cores up to 3.4. It's also got a 16-core Apple GPU, 16 GB of unified RAM, and this is LP DDR4 6400, and a 512 GB SSD. None of this is upgradable. That's how Apple does it. It's kind of just like a cell phone nowadays. Like I mentioned, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the emulation performance, but I do have a couple more videos planned. If you're interested in seeing anything else running on this, just let me know in the comments below. One thing that I really want to get into is some PC gaming on this chip, but let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, so here it is. Been up and running for a little while now, and I've got a bunch of emulators installed that we're gonna be testing out. There's several different ways that we can actually get these up and running. You could use something like Crossover or even Parallels and run Windows, but I wanna run everything natively in Mac OS. So that's exactly what we're gonna be doing in this video. And what you're seeing on screen right now is known as OpenEMU. This is specifically designed for Mac OS. It comes in really handy. It's basically an emulation front end. And it works out great for the lower end emulators, but there's not a lot of configuration that we can do, at least when upscaling. But, you know, if you wanted to run your favorite N64 games and things like that, I would highly suggest trying out OpenEMU. And one of my favorite things about this whole emulator is the controller configuration menu. As you can see from this drop down here, it'll give us, you know, the picture of the controller we want to map. And from there, we can click on the corresponding button, map it to our physical controller, and we're ready to go. Like I mentioned, it's a drag and drop system and uh, everything is really easy to set up with this, but it doesn't support the higher end stuff like PS2 and even Wii U. So we're going to go with those standalone emulators. But first up, we're going to start out light here and go with some PSP using the standalone version of PPSSPP. And the reason I'm going to be using the standalone versus something like OpenEMU is uh, we've got the ability to upscale and with the M2 Mac Mini, we can upscale all the way. We can go to 10x with every single game that I've tested. And I'm going to be using this 8-BitDo controller. Uh, if I can, I need to turn it on. I can't see this LED. It's already mapped, ready to go with the Mac Mini. There we are. I've also gone through and tested a lot of these games with different backends. We actually have access to Vulkan and OpenGL. And it really doesn't matter what backend you're using because uh, all of these games run great. First up, we've got Tony Hawk Pro Skater uh, Remix 2, and we're at 10x. So if I head back to the menu, I'll show you if we go to settings, we're using the OpenGL backend, and we're at 10x resolution. With everything we're going to be testing, that's what we're going to be set at. Now, this is only a 4K monitor, so it's still a bit overkill, but I wanted to show you that it will run these games at full speed, maxed out with the standalone version of PPSSPP. And another thing to keep in mind is this emulator isn't specifically designed for this M2 chip. It's actually the x86 version. So we're using the Rosetta translator that Apple has set up. And, you know, if we ever get an ARM based version for Mac, we could get better performance. But the way it is right now, whether you want to use OpenGL or Vulkan, we can max this emulator out on the M2 chip. I mean, this is some great performance. 
Chains of Olympus, 10x, OpenGL, no problem at all to run this game at 60. FPS is up in the top right hand corner. And these God of War games are really the go-to test, so as long as the game's compatible with the PPSSPP emulator, you're going to be able to run it at full speed. Next up, we've got some GameCube and Wii emulation using the Dolphin emulator, and the Dolphin team has done a great job with these ARM-based Macs. This is designed for either Intel or ARM-based Macs, and we can actually access the metal back in. We're going to go to 4K, but we could go to 5K if we want to. It's just kind of overkill for the display I have right now. First one we're going to be testing here is F-Zero GX on the hardest track to emulate. Fire Field, Metal Back In, 4K, 60 FPS. And over in the top right hand corner, I do have the FPS and speed listed. As you can see, I mean, this stays at a constant 60 FPS. And if you're not familiar with the Metal Back End or Metal API, this is specific to Apple. Think OpenGL or Vulkan, but it's really designed by them to run their games in kind of a different way than Vulkan and OpenGL perform. Works great with these ARM chips. And of course, since we're testing GameCube games, we had to throw Rogue Squadron 2 at it. This is a go-to test for a lot of people, and it does give, you know, higher-end systems a run for its money when it's upscaled. Right now, we're still at 4K with that metal back end, and it's running like a dream on this M2 Mac. Next thing I wanted to take a look at was some Wii U emulation using SimU. Now with the latest updates to SimU over on their GitHub, we do have a Mac version. This is going to be the experimental version, but this is made for x86 Macs, ones with Intel CPUs. Not specifically designed for these ARM-based Macs, but it'll still run with Rosetta, and I have run into some issues. Now I was able to get Breath of the Wild up and running at 30 FPS, but once I shut it down, I couldn't get it to start back up. It always crashes on me. I've tried clearing the cache out and everything like that. Just can't get it to run again. So yeah, there are issues right now with Wii U on these Mac systems using SimU. But there's games that do run at full speed and function really great. We're going to start out here with Mario Kart 8. And once the shaders are cached, this is a really decent experience. Now I'm using the Vulcan back end, but unfortunately on these ARM-based Macs, we cannot use async shader compilation mode. So we kind of have to wait like the old days on Windows and cache those shaders manually. Hopefully down the road, we do get an ARM-based version of this because we've got more than enough power to play Wii U games on the M2 chip, be it the regular M2 or M2 Pro. Here's Bayonetta 2, FPS is up at the top left hand corner, but we are working with a few graphical glitches. If you take a look at the ground, we've uh, we've got some weird stuff going on. So yeah, you will run into issues with SimU on these M2 or M1 Max right now, and it really comes down to just using Rosetta to run these. And the final thing we're going to be taking a look at is some PS2 emulation. I'm going to tell you right now, this actually blew me away. To run these, we're going to be using AetherSX2. If you head over to their website in their development section, you can download the uh, ARM-based Mac desktop version. It's going to run natively on the M1 or the M2 chips, and we're going to go up to 8x resolution using the metal back end. I'm going to tell you right now, I've done a lot of PS2 emulation on a lot of different systems, and it's never looked this good. We are getting some absolutely amazing performance out of the M2 Pro chip when it comes to PS2 emulation. I'm not sure how well this is going to come across on camera and then upload it to YouTube, but if you take a look in the top left hand corner, I've got everything we need to know about this system right now. The resolution we're running Ratchet and Clank at is 4096 by 3584. This is by far the cleanest PS2 emulation that I've ever seen. I mean, to tell you the truth, if I had this in front of me and I didn't know what was going on, I'd say that this was a remastered version for PS3. And taking it over to one of my favorite racing games, Gran Turismo 4, really does make a huge difference. Um, I would actually like to come back to this and kind of get some 4K real footage at a very high bit rate so you can see what's going on. But I think this will kind of give you an idea. This is running at 5,120 pixels by 3,584. Really cleaned up this Gran Turismo 4 game. And the final PS2 game I wanted to take a look at was God of War 2. We're still at 8x with the metal back in, but I do get a few dips every once in a while, and even if I go down to 1080p, I'll notice it dip into the mid-40s for a split second and then come right back up. 
Not exactly sure what that's about. Need to spend a little time messing around with the settings, but you know, there's a chance we could fix that dip. Either way you look at it, the game is playable here at 8X. The last thing we're going to be testing here is some PS3 emulation using RPCS3. If you're familiar with this emulator, you know it's multi-platform, Windows, Linux, and Mac. And over on the website, they state that it works on Intel-based Macs with a decent GPU and ARM-based Macs. And to my surprise, downloaded it, installed it, got everything set up, and a lot of these games run very well on the M2 Pro chip. Now, don't expect to run God of War 3 at full speed on one of these M2 CPUs, but, uh, you know, something like Tekken 6 at 720p, Vulcan back in, runs at full speed. I've got the uh, built-in frame counter on, and I'm going to minimize this because I want you to see that this is really running on this Mac Mini. Very surprised by the performance. And remember, with the M2 Pro that I have in this Mac Mini, we've got the 10-core version, so we've got 10 CPU cores. But with this game here and Demon Souls, we're only utilizing about five of those cores. Now, as a lot of you might know, there are harder to emulate PS3 games that require more cores and threads. Something like Skate 3 comes to mind. But uh, real quick, we'll go with Demon Souls. This natively ran at 30 FPS, and we've got it here. I'm very surprised that we're getting full speed PS3 emulation on the Mac Mini. I mean, this is actually really awesome, and everything that we've tested so far has worked quite well. A lot of the issues that we've run into with some of these emulators really comes down to compatibility. A lot of these emulators that do run on Mac were designed for x86 CPUs, like the Intel CPUs that Apple used to use. We're using the Rosetta Translator here, so it's not running natively on ARM, but uh, over time, I mean, a lot of these bugs can be ironed out. Now with PS3, I was really hoping that we were going to get full speed Skate 3. This is my go-to test, I mean this really does tax that CPU, but as you can see, I ran into a lot of issues. It is running at 60 FPS, but it's unplayable because uh, stuff keeps popping in, we've got all those black textures going. I've tried several different settings from within RPCS3, and I just can't get these bugs ironed out just yet. So far, when it comes to emulation on the new M2 Mac Mini, this thing is putting out some great performance, but we don't have the compatibility that we would have with Windows when it comes to a lot of the higher-end emulators. Hopefully, in the future, that changes, and you know, with the power that these Apple Silicon chips are putting out, I really do hope that more developers jump on board. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in learning more about the M2 Mac Mini, I'll leave some links in the description. And I do have a full PC gaming video planned. I want to see how this thing performs with parallels, and uh, we could also use crossover. We could do some native Mac OS gaming, some Apple Arcade. I'm really interested to see how Genshin Impact runs on this device. So if you're interested in seeing that, make sure you hit the subscribe button and think about turning notifications on. And if you've got any questions, let me know in the comments below. But that's it for this one. Like always... Thanks for watching.